one of the ideas behind uh, this uh, process of uh, evolution is this idea of self-modeling. So machines that learn from their experience and create a self-image uh, that they use to uh, predict what's going to happen. And this is uh, an example of a very simple robot. This robot doesn't look like a human at all. Uh, it's actually kind of spider-looking robot. And it's going to have a few brief interactions with the, with the world, and it's going to try to, uh, cre to form an image of itself. Let's see uh, what happens. So uh, this robot, uh, you'll see that it has four legs. But in fact, this robot doesn't know that it has four legs. It just does some moves its motors and creates uh, senses, sensations. And here it's forming, gradually forming a self-image. As, as you can see, um, it's, it's alive. Uh, it's, uh, it actually has uh, no clue what it looks like. It's beginning to form a self-image that contains four legs. It's beginning to realize it has four legs. And this is already the 16th out of 16 trials. It's pretty much figured out what it looks like. Now, this is a very simple self-image. It's a kind of stick figure. But it can use that self-image, this, this stick figure, to figure out how to walk. And here it's uh, learning how to walk with its self-image. If you like, it's learning how to walk in its imagination. Uh, and then it carries out that uh, walking in reality. We were hoping that it's going to develop an evil spidery walk, but instead it, it has like this lame way of moving sweet forward. Sweet, awkward starfish. Yeah, yeah. But, but, see, but when you look at this, you have to remember that this machine was not programmed to walk, nor did it have a model of itself, nor did it do trials of walking before. So the idea here is that it evolved the self-image and used that to figure out how to walk. And of course, to test this, to see if it really can adapt, we remove the leg off this robot. Uh, it's very sad, I know. But we put it back <laughs> in the end. And you can see here, the, the, the dynamics changed. And therefore, the self-image changed. It took about a day. And then the robot uh, uh, learned how to limp uh, without the leg. If you look closely, you can see that it didn't quite lose a leg uh, internally, it just made it short. And here you can see the robot moving without a leg. Now, oh. this is perhaps not the best way to move without a leg, but again, you have to remember that this robot was not programmed to move in this kind of case of damage. There was no sensor that said leg came off, switch to plan B. It's the, uh, the leg came off, therefore the dynamics changed, therefore the self-perception changed, and therefore it behaved in a different way. And uh, you know, I think that if we really look into the long term, there's no escape uh, but to really let these machines develop their own intelligence rather than program them if we really want to get uh, into the kinds of uh, human level intelligence that we're really after. Did anything that little starfish did surprise you? Um, well, certainly that uh, way of, of moving forward wasn't what I had in mind. Um, and uh, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of interesting to see. I think we always find it fascinating when you don't program the machine to do something and it does it on its own accord, there is something uh, really uh, inspiring in that moment. And I think that's, uh, you know, the more you program it to do something, the less exciting it is when it actually does exactly what you said because you kind of, you told it the answer.